Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. Today I have uh, grabbed my notes again, my black book, <laughs> because uh, that means that we need to do some checking up again. And this time it's uh, time for my Odontoglossum and types. And I will apologize in, uh, in upfront because this is going to be a fairly long video. Uh, I noticed that I try to make them uh, a bit smaller, so I will. Uh, break this up in sections probably next time but yeah for those who like uh, the introduction to my plants and have a look inside the pots this is the video to go and i don't can i don't want to rush it either so i try to skip between the both um, not too long but not too short but before uh, this intro is going to, to be way too long let's just start with the orchid and uh, let's uh, let me introduce you to my odontoglossum type orchids so we start this uh, section off uh, with the uh, snowfalls. It's a uh, Inca orchid, and um, yeah, it's doing uh, better. I almost lost it back in the days when I didn't check my reservoirs as I should, but it's uh, really coming back. We have a few brownie look looking roots, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, quite okay. I think it could be a bit bigger, but it's recovering. But I think it's doing well, and it's working on a spike. And I let it, uh, I will let it bloom. But uh, this one had a pH of seven and a parts per million of one hundred and twenty-four. So this one is doing uh, is fi doing fine. The snow falls from the Incas. And here I have another Inca orchid uh, plant. So I think those uh, they use uh, most of the times commercial names, but this one is. Uh, Blossom Falls, if I'm correct. Yes, Blossom Falls. So also a, a fall one. When I uh, bought this plant, it did very well, but then I messed up again the reservoir. So that's uh, before I came up with this system. But finally, this one is uh, coming back. As you can see, we have beautiful new growth here. It looks way stronger. This one was the uh, last year's growth, and I had a few blooms, but not not much and we have also another new growth coming here from the center so that's doing well it's let uh, yeah I saw a few uh, uh, healthy roots coming from the pot on the meat but it's a bit too heavy to show it but I can show you this all those new roots so this one is really happy again and recovering so I'm really happy with that since I introduced this system what I'm currently showing it really really works for me because my plants are really coming back uh, if they still have the strength, of course. <laughs> I lost a f quite a few of, uh, over the years because of the, well, not, not that that many, but I lost uh, quite, yeah, too much, I think, because I just, I didn't know. But this is a uh, Blossom Falls. So you probably uh, remember her, the incredible climber. This is my uh, Irish Mist. And she had a pH of 4.2, so that was way too low. So luckily uh, we do this uh, measurement. I'm just uh, a little behind schedule, so I'm a little bit too late. So if I have a, yeah, a few too low readings with my plants, not that much yet, but we have still uh, good looking roots. Luckily they are a little bit brown, but I don't think they are dead. And I just left it in a pot because this one is, uh, she's putting her new roots uh, is, uh, into the pot, so they are not uh, too dry. I have a nice humidity apparently. And so I'm just going to leave it be because it's such a climber. But on the other side, let's put me her back in the, in the pot, is that uh, this new growth seems to be very close to that new uh, bulb. So probably <laughs> she will stop with making these incredible long rhizomes. But uh, who knows, and uh, like I said, I'm just going to leave it be for now. Irish Mist. So you probably will remember this one. This is quite a beast of a plant. Um, and it's a very special one. This is the very first care collab I did about this plant. It's my uh, Mycea Red, Commonara Mycea Red. And it's doing fairly well, as you can see st still. Oh, I'm sorry. It still has a pot filled with roots and there are only coming new ones. So yeah, we have a few browner looking roots, but I think that's all the roots. But because this one is in this pot for at least two years now. So that's quite a, quite a long time and she's really enjoying it. So, but eventually I have to repot this one because it's becoming quite a big plant. And I really, really love the bulbs. 
those very big bulbs I don't know what it is but I really find them very showy as you can see and this one is uh, already in bloom with those beautiful very dark dark uh, red blooms it has there another spike as you can see and on this new growth here there you see another, at least another spike so I will have uh, three spikes at least on this beautiful plant but this one uh, had a pH of uh, 6.7 so I did it, give it a little bit calcium to pump, pump it up this is a see, uh, yeah, really uh, big eater they uh, had a P, uh, part per million of 6, uh, 65 so I gave it a little bit more calcium so it can enjoy uh, the, the calcium and the pH will stay uh, at a better uh, uh, level so that's basically it, my Colmenara erect and then it was time for my uh, fairly big uh, Sturbik, it's also an Inca, uh, Inca orchid, I'm sorry, but a beautiful root system, I hope you can see it. It's a very big pot, so it's a bit heavy, but it's really covered with roots, beautiful, beautiful. And it had a pH of 5.7, so it was right about time to do something about that. This one is really a big bloomer. For me at least, it's now, uh, this is number 6 for this season, 2 growths, so they both produced eventually 3 spikes, not at once, but they keep on going, and this one is already working on a new growth, so that's beautiful I think. Let me quickly show you the blooms from this, I hope, uh, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> so we have a bit of an idea, it's a little hard to, hard to see, but um, it will come by on my channel anyhow, but this is my Sturbeck, a beautiful plant as you, as you can see, it's really coming back. Struggled because of my system, my lack of my system I think, but now I uh, check the reservoirs and it's really coming back to me. This is Sturbeck. And this is the one that uh, Michael McCarthy ideated for me. I think it uh, is, is at least pretty close, but I think it really is this plant. It's very hard to do, uh, get a, a positive idea, especially on, on odontoglossum types. Well, maybe uh, orchids in general, but... Uh, uh, Wilsonara Red Pacific Deep Shadows. But I think uh, it is this one. And this is a beautiful example of older roots, darker roots who are not always dead, as you can see. They are starting to branch here. This plant is uh, quite uh, a bit older, longer in this pot, so it was to be expected to have at least some roots uh, dead because of they are, are older. But it's a very sturdy plant, beautiful leaves. So this is uh, going to, through a sort of transition, I think. New root system, probably in the near future a new growth. It did give me two beautiful large spikes. So. Uh, it's uh, currently sort of taking a rest. I see now that I have some new green root tips again. So it's coming back into the growing habit again. But a beautiful plant. Small blooms but beautiful and, and very fragrant. This is my Naevian. And also quite some roots. We have also some dead roots in the pot. But also new roots growing. So I'm not in here two beautiful ones. So yeah, it happens. It's not only healthy roots all the time of course but uh, maybe someday I will uh, give this a, a, a repot but reading parts per million wise was um, let me check quickly a 99 so it wasn't that high so there's not much um, yeah things going on in the in the reservoir because of the all the roots I think and it's really looking uh, healthy beautiful two new growths starting it had a beautiful blooming cycle and now the, I hope the, the bulbs will get bigger. The, these were the ones that were on there, then it made these ones. And it lost its root because of the transition, but now it has a beautiful root system. So I think these new growths, I have two of them, should be uh, getting quite some bigger bulbs again. Beautiful plant, I'm very happy with this, Naevium. So and this is my French town, and this one has a beautiful root system as you can see, even some roots coming underneath the pot, from underneath the pot. But the plant itself, it has that fibers. So yeah, I will clean my hands in between uh, checking. But it's making a secondary spike here and as you can see a very big one here. 
beautiful blooms, brown with orange. I have this one for, for quite some years now, I think already four years, something like that. But I never could get the, those leaves clean, so probably I need to, to try something on that. But for the rest it is a beautiful plant, very strong plant, beautiful root system, and it always blooms with at least two spikes, sometimes, uh, sometimes even three. So, But yeah, the spotting is really, uh, really nasty. It's such, such a shame that it's a well-growing plant. So I hope I... Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to, to treat it once it uh, is done, almost done flowering. So I hope I can get a clean new growth out of this. But this is my French town. It's um, Ada, Ada Glossum. Ada Glossum French town. And the next one is my Red Ruby with a beautiful new growth here. And it has a new growth, of, it's starting a new growth here, a very tiny one. There goes a pebble, but as you can see, I can hold it on a ball because this one is really pot bound, root wise, which is beautiful and such a lovely plant. Absolutely bloom wise, yes, yeah, plant is uh, it's, it's beautiful to grow because it really likes to grow. But uh, the blooms are stunning, and I had it to rebloom, but then I uh, did manage to break the spike, so it was kind of yeah, such a shame. But anyhow, it's doing still well. This one uh, needs a uh, up budding soon. It's it's almost like a, it's a, a rock hard, <laughs> like a like a, yeah, a big rock. Really, so many uh, many roots, and they are a bit discolored. But some do have that because if I give that seaweed solution, the powdery stuff that makes the roots uh, appear a bit browner. Anyhow, maybe a few of them are dead as well. But I think they are doing fine. See uh, some uh, green root tips. So yeah, this is my uh, red ruby. Beautiful plant. And this is my uh, Wilsonara Lisa Delight. And I have it now for yeah over one year in my uh, my care. But it's just not doing well for me. It's putting out a spike here, but I don't see any roots. And roots, well, actually the roots that I see are are dead. Maybe all the roots, but it's just. I was hoping that this one uh, would put out a new root system to start with, but it doesn't do that. Bulbs are not, not as big. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna let it for, for uh, let it be for now and have a close eye on it. Probably it has some roots somewhere, but uh, yeah. Just, it just don't want to do it for me. So I probably, this is not really a very strong, vigorous plant. At least uh, this uh, this particular one, but yeah, my Lisa delight. We will see in the future how this one will develop. And what a difference! Because this is my Wilsonara Inverno, one of my uh, better growing ones. And I did a check. The pH is seven and the parts per million per eighty two, so that's okay. It's uh, working with uh, on new uh, roots, but as you can see, it has quite some old one. And those are pretty much dead as well. The plant itself is doing fairly fine, so I think it's not not um, not that bad because we have a, quite some new roots as well here, um, and it's beautiful bulb, so I think it's doing okay. But it could do a uh, to have a clean up, as you can see, a lot of branching going on here, so that's uh, that's okay. But this one is definitely on the list. I will take the fern out as well and put it up. In a bigger pot because it's a uh, fairly uh, getting a fairly big plant, beautiful, uh, yeah, rusty colored uh, blooms. But uh, it's now currently done blooming. I leave this spike on it because it's still green, so I let it eat this spike again, and then I will uh, take it off. And uh, but yeah, this is uh, the inf uh, infer inferno. Did I say that right? Yes, inferno. <laughs> And we have my Wilsonara Tiger's Tail, which was uh, just done blooming, but it decided to uh, put up another spike. Beautiful blooms and a very healthy plant. The pot is really filled with roots again, so I'm so happy to see that. And it's not a very big plant yet, but I think we are going uh, to the right direction if I see this. And it's putting, like I said, another, up another spike. And I'm really happy with that. So this one is doing fairly well. It had a pH of 6.9, so give it a little bit of calcium just to uh, 
get it through the next three months pH wise and a parts per million more 100 so that's perfect still have some water in there so yeah this is my uh, tiger tail and this is my uh, Bialara Renaissance white beautiful uh, plant but it's yeah it's now working on some roots again we have a few here on the side good, good roots I did mess up the root system I think it did get a little bit too cold last year in the winter that that was the problem it's a fairly new plant for me but luckily it's working on a new growth so it will be uh, coming back I think but it's taking fairly a long time I must admit but yeah I, uh, I'm happy with the, with those roots and what I love on this spot is it's just it's a, like a teeny tiny world with that moss and I think those are blooms of moss I, I really have no idea maybe you know but look at all the moss like I said it's, a, it, it's just like a little world on itself I think it's beautiful it looks so nice so I'm really leaving it uh, there as it is I didn't do a thing about it it just came apparently with the moss in it on the root still and it uh, really enjoys growing here I think and I see this more in my pots maybe you noticed already I have quite some uh, ones of quite we have yeah quite a few that get that uh, moss in a pot I don't do a thing about it it's just coming naturally and I really enjoy it I really like the look of it and this is my Bellara Renaissance coral it's uh, more known on uh, YouTube I think we see this more coming than the white one but this is the uh, regular one also uh, one of the Incas at least for me that's how but a beautiful bloom it just opened up and its previous spike earlier this year is still on here it's still green so I leave it on uh, like I did with the other one if they uh, start to eating it up then I will cut it off so if it starts to brown up but this is just uh, some reserves for the plant and I don't uh, don't mind the look of it such a beautiful plant and as you can see a lot of roots beautiful a pot filled with roots fairly uh, young plant still and uh, but it's doing fairly well I only already see here with my thumb I hope you can see it a new growth it's blooming and it's this is a fairly new growth if I'm correct and this this one is still developing so yeah beautiful beautiful and we have one here already as you can see so this one is making two new growths that's promising I, ho I really hope to make this uh, to get it into a very big plant I really like those uh, like I said earlier on those big odontoglossum uh, plants it's just such a special family for me I really really enjoy growing them so uh, yeah let's grab another one and the next one is my Bellara pink carpenter well first of all beautiful root system it's still working on the root system and it's a fairly young plant but it's doing so well and not that long ago we did a care collab about this one and I tried to show it because it was in bud then but it opened up with blooms beautiful beautiful blooms and this is a new bulb currently blooming but it has a second spike over here and I just discovered that I well I did know that I had two growths, new growths here as well but both of them are bringing two spikes as well so I will have six spikes on this one so it's a fairly small plant still but six spikes and a pot filled with roots so this one is really enjoying its life here in self-watering I think and that makes me happy that really makes me happy because that's why we put all the work in don't we yes oh, yes of course <laughs> so uh, yeah that, that really makes me happy um, and yes I did discuss this as well I have a few butt blasting uh, butt blasting here going on two of them I did open the window and I did forget it overnight so it was uh, uh, getting a very cold draft not good but uh, that's the only thing the rest is perfect it had a pH still of 7.2 last time so over three months four months ago it had a pH of 7.3 and I'm pointing that out so that's why I know that I don't mind a pH between 7 and 7.5 and that is why I always use the calcium and bring it back to that pH because you can see this plant is doing so well so that's a for me a comfort zone to bring the pH back in uh, around that level not a, not a bit lower 
because then I have to check more often and now I can only only check every three to four months and you can see the results this one is doing beautiful it hadn't a lower pH in between so we're talking about seven months at a basic pH in a pot of uh, 7.2 at least so I fertilized around 6 6.3 and this constantly had, at least for seven months, a pH around 7.2. And I'm putting that up because that's very important. That's my a part of the thinking process of my customized cell watering uh, growing method that I'm uh, that I'm using. So it's very important if you want to uh, understand why I, uh, like I said, bring it back uh, with the calcium in the reservoir, the pH around 7, 7.5. This is my Miltodium red white something. It's a Bartley, yeah, I have it listed as a Bartley swatch lookalike. This is, a, and this one just opened a bloom, so I can show it to you that this, the edges of the uh, sepals and petals are uh, spotted, and with a uh, true Bartley swatch, it, that isn't the case. But this one uh, is get, mi get mixed up for a Bartley swatch. Yeah, quite often in my uh, in my opinion, um, and I do understand why. But it is uh, if yeah, uh, yeah, it's not a uh, a true Bartley Schwartz, but it really does look like it. So as far as I know, the Bartley Schwartz do not have those spotted uh, tips on the petals and the sepals. But one, uh, but it's a beautiful plant. It has a beautiful root system. It's starting to grow again. I. Uh, had it's uh, too low pH for too long in this pot. I have this one quite long already, and the spiders love it. But I leave it because they'll help. They'll help. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those help me to prevent uh, the pest. And uh, yeah, this one is really coming back to life. Luckily, and a beautiful uh, working on a beautiful spike. New growth here. That is now uh, blooming, and we have another smaller new growth here in the back. So yeah. It's doing uh, fairly well. It had a pH of 6, so it needed some calcium to bring it back around 7 and a part per million uh, from 105. So that's, uh, that's perfect. So this is my uh, Dega De Morara Pacific Dreams Rainensis and something behind it that I don't have on, in my notes because of this. It has an incredibly long name. But um, yeah, let's try to look at the roots first. It has a beautiful root system, some older dead roots as well. But I uh, think those were there um, when I did plant this one for the first time in cell watering. I have it now for about a year, I think. But as you can see, <laughs> we have a lot of blooms. Let me try to put it back in this pot so we can uh, show, uh, have a quite look at the beautiful um, spikes. It has, let me see, five big spikes. I hope you can see them. Get a general idea here. And I have one still here as well. A beautiful display of blooms. Absolutely stunning, if you ask me. I really, really, really love them. Beautiful color. And the fragrance is, is really nice. It's... Um, not not incredibly strong, and I, I, I uh, tr yeah, I think I detect a hint of uh, anise in it. If I pronounce it correctly, yeah, anise, I think, a nice in in Dutch, but uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. But what a display! It's top heavy because of the spikes. So I really need to uh, pay attention to that. But doing obviously fairly well. It had a pH of six point eight parts per million. Were nineteen. This. Uh, 90, sorry, not 19, 90. So I did give it a little bit of calcium to get it back above the 7 again. I'm not pretty sure about the ID of this one, but I have it listed as my Bellara Pacific Pastel. And a beautiful, uh, beautiful plant, but it's not doing very well. I think it's coming back to it, but you, we can see we don't have any roots here. But the bulb is looking... Uh, nice but it could could have been bigger and i really hope and i see some good roots going in the pot uh, around that area but we could have a uh, have a few more and it's working on a a very very long spike so let me turn this a little bit so you can see it has a very very long spike and there's the plant again so i'm going to let it bloom so i can probably have a 
better look at the idea. But then I uh, may cut the spike because this uh, this plant could use some energy to produce uh, more roots. In about I really really love the blooms. I really want to have uh, to keep this one alive. But uh, yeah, I think Pacific Pastel, but I'm not uh, not sure. And the pH was uh, around seven, so it's doing fine. It didn't have to do uh, anything for this one. And this is my Colmenar Alkma with a beautiful spike. This one is really reliable, uh, <laughs> uh, blooming wise. It really likes to bloom. Um, and I uh, really like to grow because this is already working on a new growth at this side. And you can see two older spikes here. And currently beautiful in bloom again with this uh, spike. With, uh, and it has quite a lot of roots. Beautiful root system. Again a pot filled with roots. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm checking. Yeah, I think I see another spike coming already. But uh, yeah, Commonal Altmar. Beautiful one. And this one I have uh, listed as my Joe Drum, Bellara Joe's Drum. At least it's very similar, but I'm not 100% sure. It wasn't no idea when I bought it. And as you can see, I can hold it by its ball, by the bulbs, because uh, this pot is filled with roots again. We have some areas that can be put in some roots, but you can see it's beautiful water root system. And currently working on a beautiful, strong looking new growth. It had two beautiful spikes on it and beautiful, beautiful blooms. This one could be have put it up, but it doesn't need it uh, very soon. But I think I will put it up somewhere in this year, probably start of next year. But it's really doing well. It had a pH of 5, so it really needed calcium. This one uh, has it quite often because it's a fairly small pot with a big plant with a big root system. So it eats fairly uh, fairly well. And I see then that they, the, the drop in the pH is starting to look... Uh, I can see that drop uh, more often in those cases. But uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's uh, it's a uh, Joe's drum. Uh, if I'll, uh, I think it's uh, very close. Let, uh, let me put it like that. Colmenara calante. That's the next one. It's this plant. And it has quite some roots, but they are very brown. So I'm not sure if they are, are all are alive. But they are, um, are certain some good roots, uh, luckily. I don't have this one in uh, for long in my collection. It came with these uh, two bulbs and its new growth. And it did uh, fairly well in self-watering. It started to making roots fairly well. It still has a little bit smaller bulb, but a beautiful uh, working on a beautiful spike, as you can see. So I'm going to leave that spike. I think it's doing well. It has a lot of roots, but I hope uh, in next girl will absolutely have uh, get a bigger bulb. That's the goal, of course. But it had a yeah, nice pH around seven, so I don't have to do anything about it. So this is my Cyrtonopsis amethyst gem. Beautiful big plant. It's also a beautiful root system. I see some roots that I think those are dead, but luckily uh, still uh, uh, some alive roots as well, because this one is really working on a very big spike still and a new growth, so it really can use the roots. It does look a little bit uh, desiccated, but um, the, the pH is 7.2 and the parts per million 100, so it's eating and doing its thing. So I think it's okay, but it's working on a lot currently. Maybe a little bit too much for the plant. We'll keep an eye on it, but I think it did shows to do this, so I think it can handle this. But a uh, beautiful one, and the fragrance is fantastic. Fantastic. My most favorite one, if you didn't already know. <laughs> Fragrance-wise, at least. And this is a no ID for me, so if you recognize it, please let me know. I, but I couldn't find an ID on it, or, or a very close one. Lots of roots, it's doing fairly well. It's putting some roots out of the pot here. But yeah, it really covered the pot up with, with roots. And now currently working on two beautiful spikes. So let me put it back, and let me show you a little bit quickly the blooms. They have Pretty much color changes as you can see. They darken 
if they open up they dark uh, they're fairly dark but then they uh, start to lighten up quite quickly but I uh, I think it's a beautiful one beautiful plant but uh, it had a beautiful pH of uh, 7 and 77 parts per million so I don't have to do a thing about this this is my Bellara Alciara Havanian Nights with a beautiful bloom but it stopped growing uh, producing more but it's okay it's first time bloomer it's a very young plant it's doing fairly well we have some uh, some alive roots, a few, that one I think, and a lot of algae. This one is in a yellow pot and apparently the algae doesn't mind. It, it gets enough light, so this will be in a black pot soon. And it will uh, do a repot on it. I just wait a few uh, more weeks probably, because I really want to enjoy this beautiful bloom. But as you can see it has produced a beautiful, very big, in comparison to the previous uh, one, bulb. So uh, it's doing fairly fine, but it's a young plant. It was off blooming for about a year uh, uh, to two years, as it said on on Luke's uh, website. But uh, from, yeah, I was lucky enough to get a get a bloom out of it already to enjoy. But this one had a pH of six point seven, so I did give it a little bit of calcium, and now it's uh, good to go for now. But I will change the pot because I don't like the al algae uh, in there. But a beautiful bloom. The next one is my Odontoglossum Carla. Fairly new plant to me, but it's uh, making a beautiful root system. It has quite some roots here. And doing uh, well, it had a pH of 7.1 and 58 parts per million. So it has a little bit of mold there. So I'm going to take off the old sheets. As you can see, I can really peel them off very easily. And I like to do this because, as yes, you can see, this, these old sheets are. Uh, do get moldy quite quickly but uh, yeah besides that it's uh, doing fairly well it's a beautiful young but healthy plant so okay I will try, try my best uh, Odontia I think uh, Luli Munier I think that's uh, how we should pronounce it but uh, it's doing uh, well it's a fairly young plant new in my collection but it has beautiful roots but this growth I think uh, the roots were a little bit too late to get enough string to come out uh, very nice so this has a bit of uh, those con constantaneous leaves harmonica shaped leaves so that's a bit uh, sad but this new growth looks way better it has some spotting but uh, the growth itself is looking better so I think it will get there but it's a very very young plant so it really needs to uh, get some strength in it but I think we are on uh, a right track and it had a beautiful pH and parts per million so I don't have to do anything about this one and this is my Dig Digmore Nawara purple princess yeah the pronunciations I'm sorry but uh, it's a beautiful uh, plant it's a young plant but it has a beautiful uh, root system going on so that makes me very happy and that is why I think those leaves are already getting very tall so I hope this will make a very nice large bulb as well and becoming a uh, fairly uh, fairly big let me try to put it in to the pot but it had a beautiful uh, pH and uh, parts per million so I don't have to do anything to this plant it's doing very well and this one is an officially a no idea. I call this this my Sturbic White. The, I don't think there's any plant, but it uh, that has that name. But it uh, really does me it reminds me of the Sturbic, but then more white with red than uh, than like uh, yellow with red uh, on the uh, Sturbic itself. Sad thing is this one it has a virus, some kind, so I have to treat it uh, as well. I think I. The new growth does look cleaner, so that's better. And it has a beautiful uh, root system going on in the pot as well. It's also currently working on a, a new spike, as you can see. So soon I can uh, show you the blooms again. But uh, this one is uh, doing well. It had a good pH reading, actually 7.4, so that was high enough. And uh, parts per million were okay as well. So I don't have to do about anything about this one as well. And this is not a no idea. With beautiful tiny orange blooms. It does uh, look... Uh, it has a tag, but it... Uh, I, uh, this is an old tag, so that's not a name. And I call it Little Buttercup. 
no idea so I, uh, I, which, I know which one it is. It does remind me of the uh, Odonto Blossom Butter Cup. I think it's called at least uh, the Incas. But I don't think it's the same one. I, I think that this one has even a bit smaller uh, bloom so therefore I keep uh, calling it a little buttercup. So I, like I said I know which one it is and for me my notes and etc. is it's very important. Obviously if I do these checkups that I know which plant I have and list them all as no ideas. It makes it very uh, very hard to find the right one. Giving them numbers, hmm, I don't like it so much. I prefer a name, self-made name. So, uh, but this one is uh, doing fairly well as well. 6.7 parts, per, uh, I'm sorry, P8, so I did give it a little bit of calcium to get it back at seven again. And, uh, and that's it, it can go to the shelf. It's doing fine. So, and this is my Odontonia Irish Treasure Surprise. But uh, I did give this a flush. It had a parts per million of around 153. But I do, do see some uh, salt built up. And it doesn't, it has some alive roots, but not much. So therefore, uh, this one is uh, not doing perfectly fine. As you can see, it's a bit shriveled. It's working on two new growths. So yeah, I try to uh, keep this pot a bit cleaner than the rest, just to give the roots a little bit more encouragement to uh, go in, into the pot. And I see new roots coming, so hopefully it's going to be fine. But this one is really struggling from the start, so yeah, I hope it will uh, will find its way. But we have some beautiful new roots here and uh, in, in the pot as well, so probably it will be fine. But yeah, we shall see. Iris treasure. So and this is my Colmenara Sweet Orange, a very young plant and it's luckily starting to uh, put some beautiful roots inside of the pot. It did take a bit longer for this one, but um, yeah I bought this one from Schroeder I believe, let me check quick, quickly, yeah, no Wichmann, I'm sorry, Wichmann from Germany. Uh, this one and also the next one we will have a look at, but I couldn't find any uh, for pictures of the blooms. So Commonara Sweet Orange, I have no idea. They were only seven euro fifty at the time uh, per plant, so I thought, well, just uh, a nice surprise. So we'll buy them and we one day hopefully we'll see how they bloom. So I have no idea what kind of types of bloom these guys will have. But this one uh, did do well. It had a uh, parts per million, no, I'm sorry, a pH of 6.7. So I give it a little bit of calcium, but it's uh, working on a beautiful root system and finally starting to uh, grow well, I think. So this is the other one. And this is the um, Colmenara Rose. And in Dutch it would mean pink, but I, I have no idea. So maybe this one has pink flowers, I, of rosy flowers. I, ha I really have no idea. Once again, that's why I bought these uh, two plants, just uh, out of curiosity. And uh, they were very young plants, but this one is doing even better than the one before. As you can see, a lot of roots. Beautiful, even in the back here. So yeah, and you can see the color is a bit lighter, I think, because it's a... Uh, a bit stronger plant, beautiful shiny bulb here, still making some new roots as well. It had a pH reading of 6.8, so I give it a little bit of calcium as well. But yeah, one day I hope to see uh, blooms on both of them and we can uh, see if, um, if we like them and if we didn't already have them. But I think, uh, yeah, it's a fun little project that I have going on. And the next one is also a no idea, fairly new. I bought this at, uh, well, I did repot it at the 8th of August this year, so it's fairly new. But such a beautiful odontoglossum type again. Beautiful big bulb, which I really like. Working on a beautiful new growth. This one uh, has a number, it's number uh, 34 in my collection. It's uh, red and yellow blooms, just because I don't have an idea for this. So sometimes I really. Uh, cannot avoid in giving them a number, but this is, looks to me that it can get a quite a big plant and uh, once again I really really like that. So uh, it had a pH around 7.6, that was to be expected because the media is still uh, yeah, uh, rising that uh, pH, so then it's a bit, a bit high, but it's doing well, it's going to be okay. It has a little spider, 
with it as well. I'm going to leave that once again because it helps me to pre prevent this, uh, this plant from getting any pests. But uh, so far so good. And really strong leaves as well. That's always a sign I like to tap them and feel them. Sturdy leaves, it's a, it's a really good sign. And we have another no idea. This one is, uh, at, uh, is number uh, 37. Fairly new as well, even a bit newer than the previous one. I did repot them on the same date. But um, it's a Cheyenne type plant. I'm not completely sure it's the Cheyenne, but it has a beautiful big bulb. It uh, was a bit desiccated, but it did come back. And I, I found a beautiful example for, uh, I hope you can see this on camera, that the root looks dead, but it's branching. So yeah, that's not always uh, always the case when the roots are darkened. We saw some darkened roots in this uh, video, but that doesn't mean always that they are dead. So that's, uh, this one has a beautiful example of that. And as you can see, it's working on a uh, new growth. Let me put it back in the pot. And it's working on this beautiful new growth. So hopefully that will bring us some beautiful blooms one day again. But once again, this is a typical Odontoglossum bulb for me and I really really enjoy them. Beautiful leaves, no spotting at all. That's not, uh, not, not very common but this one is doing uh, fairly well I think. Number 37. So okay and um, once again I will try my best. Od Odontia Quidlinburg I think it's called. Beautiful one with a very very large spike that I did manage to break when I bought it. It did break uh, trying to get this uh, arc at home, but uh, it's doing so well. Beautiful, what a lot of roots. Fairly new, so this is beautiful. I'm so happy with this. Beautiful, strong new growth that uh, probably will bring back those beautiful blooms. Let's hope it will. It had a uh, pH of 6.6, .6, so it did need a little bit of calcium. But yeah, beautiful to bring that pH back up. Healthy, healthy leaves. Beautiful plant. Looking forward to that uh, bloom. To those blooms. Absolutely. And this is my Odontonia Fiona Eisler. Beautiful plant. Young plant when I bought it. I don't. I have it for from May uh, the 9th. So not that long. For a few months now. But it's really starting to put out uh, roots finally. And new growth. Quite a lot of new growth, so if they are going to survive and going to be bigger, then we might have uh, get a quite a nice display. And the pH, the pH was uh, around seven, I think. Yeah, seven point two. So it was uh, fairly fine. So I don't have to do anything about this. Parts per million were eighty, so not too much fertilizer in it. Doing uh, very well, I think. And now those roots really need to uh, go into the pot, but I think it will be okay from the side of it. And this is my Biolara Torero. Torero, yes. <laughs> and it's a very young plant, but doing beautiful. A, a heck of a lot of roots, at least on this side. Putting some uh, aerial roots out there, which is okay. And uh, yeah, it had a nice pH of uh, 7.1, so I don't need to do anything there. I don't want to break those roots, so carefully put it back in a pot. But it uh, looks to me that this is really enjoying uh, living her life in my orchid room. And uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to this one, to blooming one day. It's a very, very young plant, so it didn't bloom already, but may maybe from this new growth. Who knows? So, and finally, you guys, this is the last one. With making uh, two new growths, and I'm talking about my Balera Gothic. And um, it has some roots in a pot, not that much, but I think it's doing uh, well. It's a very young plant. It did struggle to get it to go. I lost this part of the plant, but now it looks like it's going to make it, luckily. Beautiful plant, but very young. It's a seedling, as I think, I can, think uh, I can call it still a seedling, at least a very young young plant. But uh, uh, it had a pH of uh, around 7. Nice parts per million, so I don't have to do anything about it. But this is the last one for, for today to check. So let's put it back to the shelf. 
So this was the checking the reservoir part for my Odonto Glossom types. And I'm a bit afraid that this one, uh, this video get, uh, did get a bit too long, so I probably will change it up in uh, Bellera types and um, what do we have anymore? Wilsonara types, something like that. So just to make it a little bit smaller. But uh, I really, really enjoy growing these beauties. Look how beautiful that common are red. Such a beautiful big plant. And once again, this showstopper there, the beautiful uh, purple blooms. So yeah, okay, anyhow, as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, I will do these uh, updates for around every uh, three to four months. Um, for now, once again, thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.